Welcome to Cricket World TV. A happy new year to you. And we're going to have our Ashes review now. And it's fair to say it wasn't really a happy new year for England. Al, Australia won the series 5-0, winning every single test match. There was a sense of inevitability that that was going to be the scoreline from quite a long way out. I think after the first day, um, it was all Australia. And for an English point of view, it was a car crash of a series for them. But from an Australian point of view, what a fantastic, brilliant series that they had. Absolutely. Now, plenty has been made of how bad England were, plenty of people on Twitter, in the media. But how much do we put this series scoreline down to Australia being very good or England being very bad? Well, I think um, the stats really speak for themselves. England weren't very good and Australia were much better uh, in all departments, really. Um, England, I think they had only two players that really um, stood stood out and played to any sort of potential, and that was Stuart Broad and Ben Stokes. Good to see Ben Stokes um, uh, playing for England, um, but nobody else really played to their potential. Now, Australia made history. They named the same team for each Ashes Test match. How important was it for their players to stay fit, particularly their fast bowlers, and give Michael Clark that consistency of selection? Well, I think uh, any team that has consistency in their players means that um, there's no trouble in the dressing room. And obviously, from a fitness point of view, having their fast bowlers and their main strike bowlers fit for the whole series obviously uh, meant that England were under pressure the entire time. And uh, Alistair Cook did say that uh, it was the best um, bowling attack that he had played against in his career. I mean, Ryan Harris is an interesting case because he didn't, in the early part of his career, could barely manage to string two tests together, five tests in a row, took 22 wickets, was a key performer. Mitchell Johnson, 37 wickets. Yeah, Mitchell Johnson really was a surprise. Ryan Harris, we knew from the summer, if he, if he played well and consistently, he was always going to be a problem for England. But uh, Mitchell Johnson, real surprise. I know we said it at the beginning that uh, if he was on fire, he could pose some problems, but we never thought it would be um, the, the sort of problems that he posed and really blew away um, the England uh, top order. And he's done that to such an extent now that there are already calls for major changes to England's coaching staff. They're playing eleven. What's your take? What would you do? Well, I think um, the, in the natural uh, demise of um, certain people in the in the ECB through retiring, um, there's there's been a bit of a shake up anyway. Jeff Miller's gone. Um, uh, Hugh Morris has moved over to Glamorgan from from his job, and Paul Danton's coming in. So there's been a lot of changes uh, already, just um, by default, really. I think uh, if you go any further with with change, um, and I'm certainly not looking at uh, Alistair Cook um, being replaced. Uh, I hope he will come back from this as as captain, and and we'll see if it makes him a really good captain. Michael Clark went through a very bad patch with Australia, and he's um, turned out to be a really strong captain and brought uh, Australia back to the brink of um, world number one. And they've only got the series against South Africa to to capitalise on, and they could be number one in the world in a couple of months' time. They could, and I want to press you on one change for England or potential change, Kevin Peterson. Do you, do you think he has a future playing for England? Well, it, it's a difficult one that um, I regard uh, Kevin Peterson as, as, a, as a bit like Marmite, really. Uh, you either love him or you hate him. What I say doesn't really matter. It's, it's how he performs. He was um, obviously the, the top England scorer on the tour, but it was half as many runs as, he's, as he should have got. So um, from my perspective, uh, I think... Uh, a few of the senior players have got to look at themselves and possibly um, walk out the door if they're not um, shown the door. Thanks for that, Al. Well, Australia will have a richly deserved public celebration. Then they're going to play the ODIs in 2020s against England. But you mentioned there the Australia-South Africa Test Series in a couple of months' time. That is already really looking like a series to keep an eye on.